Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 2nd, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 740. And for not having done this for about a month, uh, I think that went pretty well. I don't know about you. <laughs> just like old Pretty times good. just like old times. yeah like yeah. riding a bike yeah i suppose um yeah there seems to be a little bit of a something seems different so if you haven't noticed yet i'm at a slightly different camera angle Okay, maybe it's not slightly different, but you get my drift, right? Also, you might hear a little echo because I have a really large, or at least long, uh, living room uh, slash dining room, I suppose. I don't know, but uh, and uh, I think my lighting's a little bit better. It's not as dark. As it used to be. As dark. Yeah. You can also see my apartment behind me because I'm not embarrassed for what behind me this time. <laughs> you know, I, got a, I got a closet and that's my kitchen. And then you can't see anything over that way because my angle, because actually this is one wall of my, my apartment. And this is the rest of my living room. And my desk ah. is, is like, instead of being at the corner of the living room, I have it like into the living room. So it's actually facing. I'm oh. actually planning on having like a little bit of space and then the, my futon, a little bit of, and a bit more space, and then my uh, television, and then the remaining space, which goes up right to the windows at the front of my apartment, uh, is basically kind of going to be my utility area. Where I'm going to have my, where my uh, internet thing will just kind of sit, sit there. And I'm using my old dog crate as a table for that. And um, I actually uh, brought my microwave with me from, from Austin. And then I told, because I totally forgot that, well, there's a microwave already in my apartment, <laughs> which is better. <laughs> So I have the spare one. So uh, once I clean up the the dog crate a little bit, I'm gonna gonna actually put that into it. So I've got the so it's kind of gonna be like a storage unit almost. So um, it'll be interesting once I clean up all this place. And I think I'm gonna put my DVDs against those walls or something. Might have to get an extra little bookcase for a few things. Um, but uh, I have plans. It's going to be slow and steady wins the race. Um, but uh, I just can't wait until I can afford an actual bed instead of just a futon. Although once I got the futon, sweet dreams for me. Uh, it was so much better than sleeping mm-hmm. on the floor, which I did for about a week until I got paid. Ugh. And I got some of my reimbursements. It was great once I got those. Got another set of uh, one coming and get paid on Friday, which should be between those two. I should be able to get a full size bed. So I'm not going king. I'm not going queen. I'm going full, which is a step above twin, um, because it's just me. 
And so hmm. I definitely want bigger than a twin, but I don't feel like I need to spend the extra money for, for a queen. I already got the sheets, and I'm using the sheets on the futon, uh, I, which I'm essentially using as my bed. So that's it. So that's just a description of my apartment that I got. I like my place. It's neat. It's first floor. It's even better. Um, but, uh, so I had a road trip starting on the 8th. <laughs> I, I ditched my old apartment in a sad, sad state. Um, but I had to get on the road in order to time everything right. Um, as I was driving through Texas, I ran into a Bucky's. So mm. uh, to visit Buc a Bucky's for my first time, for those who don't know, Bucky's is like the superstore version of a gas station. Okay. It was huge. It was yes. like a little mini market. Market. They even had like, instead of just like the, the food place with the, with the rollers, there was like stations. Yeah. For the food. And, and they had like a, a nice full place of, of like souvenir apparel. And it was just like in an area in an apartment store it it was wild but uh gary you're a little too far north for for bucky's i have right i have not been to a bucky's but i will say i have been to some truck stop slash convenience store gas station things that are that are really kind of upping the game um in terms of things, I know it doesn't compare to Bucky's, but there was a place I went to. I had to go clear over across my state, and I cannot for the life of me remember what the name it was. It was a chain I'd never heard of. So it wasn't Wawa, it wasn't Sheets. Those are the big ones in PA. It was a different one. But it was interesting because I came in during breakfast. I had to pick up gas, and I came in to grab a breakfast sandwich. And there was an attendant literally making breakfast sandwiches and wrapping and putting them up. Like, and you could request alterations like as they were making it you could say hey could you put like make me one with pepper jack cheese instead of whatever and they would just do that right on the spot and i was super impressed by that because most of the places i go to they're already pre-made and you can't see the attendant they're kind of like i don't know magically somewhere else or everything is mto made to order so mm -hmm. like this place kind of did both Anyways, but I was I was really kind of impressed. They had a t lot of different like options. Anyways, so I know it's not the same thing. Bucky's is basically kind of like a, a supermarket from the sounds of it, like grocery store. It just happens to be a truck stop because I've seen some videos and I'm like, OK, that's it's it's that's not, crazy. It's not really a truck stop, honestly. I don't even yeah. think they have showers. It's a gas station. Just, <laughs> you're just with a ton of different a uh, ton of pumps and then just this grocery store level size uh things and their bathrooms are really nice that's yeah that's cleanest why restrooms Bucky's. in america that's why I, the, why I stopped at Bucky's because i needed to pee uh by the way i loaded up my car i was like okay i know one thing i'm gonna need for this trip Liquid refreshment the entire way. So I stopped at HEB on my way out. I grabbed a 12 pack of Minute Maid lemonade because I didn't want to have the bubblies, especially. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a soda person anymore. Like, mm. I like soda. I'll drink it. And hey, uh, on occasion, I'll, I'll grab a cherry Coke if it's, if I, need something i'm in a grocery store or something or or a a monster or well, actually i'm more about the monster coffee drinks but um in any case i'm not much of a soda person nowadays uh, so i grabbed that and i was like okay i got this big old glass jug which used to have sangria in it that i had drunk years ago and it's a nice big glass jug gallon jug mm. and so i filled mm. it up with with water and i'm like you know what i'll get one of those mu things and just like 
fill it up and, and you know, shake it up and, and to, to flavor the water. It'll be great. Uh, either I overestimated or there was something about it that didn't work with me because I think I kind of got a little sick during my drive because of it. And obviously, mm. I'd re be real feeling my, I mean, as I'm going on the road, uh, if I run out, out of something in my nice little beverage thing, I could easily quickly grab one of the cans of uh, lemonade, Minute Maid lemonade. lemonade lemonade uh but then when i stopped at a rest stop i made sure to take a decent amount of rest stops because you know get up stretch pee that sort of thing um and then i would just fill this up again whenever i stopped um but uh something i don't think agreed with me about uh and so actually for most of my trip we stopped in uh, Texarkana and stopped outside of Nashville before heading up to Cincinnati. My first stop on my way up was to this apartment complex where I, I went and saw which apartment, got it reserved, said, and they were like, okay, I've got two upstairs that are like we can move in as quickly as possible and I have one down downstairs like there's only two levels uh that but that's going to take longer and I'm like oh I just need a place I don't want to be in a hotel for, <laughs> for a week or something and so she took me and it was actually this building too that I'm in because they're just like this bunch of disparate buildings all in this one relatively large area um which have like the eight apartments on a floor and some of them are like two bit and some of the buildings are two bedrooms and some of them are uh townhouses even so uh but she, we came over to this building and to look at one of the second floor apartments and we went up some stairs and I noticed stairs were about just a person wide. Mm -hmm. oh. They were not very wide at all. She went into the apartment. It wasn't ready. She kind of like looked around and was like, oh, there's a few things that need to be taken care of. And she, she was like, oh, let's let's take a look at the one on the first floor. And we came into this apartment. It was definitely not ready. They were redoing a floor. Or, oh, I think they were going to put a new carpet in the bedroom or something. And then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and, and wait the week and uh, take the first floor apartment. Um, the one thing I did like about the first floor apartment is... Right outside the front door, there's a patio with a fence mostly around it. So it isn't something that mm. closes, but it is tall enough that, um, I mean, there's little areas where you can see through, but for the most part it is out of sight. So if I get a package mm. delivered and they del just deliver it to my door, you have to be at the right angle um, right. outside the apartment to see see and see it so it made me feel like if anything packages would be relatively safe uh in general i feel like if a package was ma mailed to me here I, I i'm not gonna worry too much if i'm at work and don't get it until i get home so uh, that was one thing i like and there's like a nice big area out front i mean i mm. could have a patio patio table and like four chairs and this is a little little area if i wanted to probably hmm. won't do that but it's it's nice i liked it yeah yeah and the, so you can walk up the the window the the bedroom actually sticks out so the front door is like here's the front door and then the right next to it is the is like part of the bedroom which is where the window for the bedroom is so that's all into this little patio area. So even looking into the bedroom, 
no one can see unless they're actually in the patio area or somehow peeking through the other side from the from the patio on the other side of the a wall. So a, a lot of privacy. Also, uh, a lot of interesting things that could happen with people who are slightly exhibitionist and <laughs> with some voyeurs. You know, you realize you have neighbors, right? Yes, but unless they're trying to look in, they can't see see into the bedroom. Okay, that part. Well, I didn't know if you were going to get all exhibitionist on this and be like, "Woo!" Putting on a show in the window for the neighbors, and I'd be like, no, no. "You realize they can call the cops, right?" Just no, like, that 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 window I is mean, totally and, not public. And and you're on the first floor, which is even worse because people would just be casually walking by, but. No, nope, there's, there's the patio fence, so that's going to pretty much block yeah. everybody's casually walking by. Did I have? No, I was up on the second floor. Because the window isn't facing, like, out towards the parking lot. The window is facing into the patio. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So hmm. You, get, you have, some, you have a, a little sense of privacy, then. Yeah. Which I think is good. I like that. Yeah. Personally, I I just need privacy. I like yeah. prefer some privacy. We don't really have it. I mean, but no, we don't. Well, we kind of do. That's just the start of my newfound adventure. Yes. So I wasn't getting into the apartment for a week. Well, good news. I part my uh, company who's relocated here, me here to Cincinnati. Uh, had said, hey, for your, your initial stay until you actually get into an apartment, uh, we will pay for uh, your housing expenses, so a hotel or whatever. Um, so I got a hotel for a week. I thought I had it until that Saturday just to kind of do a nice overlap for good measure. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't. So while I was at work, they called me and said, uh, by the way, we're, we, we, there's still stuff in your room. Were you going to move that out? And I'm like, I, no, I swear I had it till, till Saturday. And they go, no, you only had it till today. And I'm like, pull up my, my receipt from, from what I ordered. And I'm like, shit, I didn't. So I was like, okay, you guys are doing this thing. Uh, I got to go take care of this. <laughs> so, so I, I, I booked up to my my hotel paid for another day it was like this was my bad uh that was an extra 80 some dollars um i've been there to totally accepted responsibility for it but they were kind enough to be like okay if you're gonna pay for another night great we'll, we'll just do that it's fine yeah uh so it was fine but it was an extra expense uh, uh, so that previous Monday, so that Monday, um, the week that I had the hotel was when I had to report to work. So we reported to the office, we took a little tour of the office. Apparently it's like supposed to be a nature-ish, preserve-ish type thing where they keep mm -hmm. the, the surrounding area natural. So like the drive up to the office because it's, it's relatively remote. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like too far off the beaten path, but it, it's, it's, it's a, maybe about a mile drive from the nearest like crossroads into, mm -hmm. into the, to get to the actual office. Uh, but all that land around it from like the road beyond is all, uh, uh, owned by my company and so the, it has a speed limit of 20 miles per hour for good reason because of how let everything lie it is there are deer oh. and other animals that could be crossing that street at any point in time so for the safety mm -hmm. of your car and the safety of the animals it wants you to drive slower. I will tell you this. No one drives 20 that long there. Yeah. 
but they probably still are about 30, 35, maybe 40. But, you know, but um, there's a reason why they put that, that speed, those speed limit signs up. And uh, since I've, since I, I've been driving to the office, I've seen, a, I had a total of four deer sightings. I'm not going to say I saw four deer because I don't know if they were all different deer. I may have seen some same deer, but there's at least two of them because one time I saw both of them. One of them was in the middle of crossing the road, and as I was pull, pulling up <laughs> into, into the road, I spotted them. And the one was in the middle of the road and just did the Nice. Uh, before sauntering off the road. Fortunately, they were even in the, it was even in the other lane, but I'm like, I don't know what you're going to do, so I'm just going to stop here, let you do your thing, <laughs> and then when I saw them move off to the side, I just move it on. It was fun. But, yeah, there were reasons. We had squirrels, birds, uh, we've had geese coming around, uh, which made me really feel at home. Because uh, in Rochester, we have uh, a lake called Silver Lake where uh, a lot of Canadian geese roosted. <laughs> mm. So I'm very familiar with geese, and I'm like, oh no. But uh, some of them would be like just kind of like wandering around right in front of the office. So a lot of nature stuff there. Uh, but since starting work, um, I had already started training the week before remotely in Austin. And then for two days, I continued training. And most of that was just getting them onboarded, getting them familiar with some of the background about the, about the job uh, and, and stuff until we could get them onboarded and into the systems and get them computers and, and be able to access everything so we could actually do do the thing, essentially. Uh, with two workflows, we ended up splitting them up after uh, one additional week. And then just last week, uh, the main group that I'm going to be a part of after we're, we don't have anybody to train, um, we actually had someone from our client actually doing some teaching. They were doing it remotely this week, but uh, they are going to be in the office this week. So that's going to be fun, but I have learned a few things because this is a workflow that we had before and are getting back. Uh, and even an additional workflow on top of that, which kind of is related. So it's interesting. I mean, I'm just kind of excited about it, which is kind of strange. Uh, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Oh, you froze for a moment. Oh. You're back. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, some frames drop too. Damon, you're f muted. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure I'm muted. I'm sure. <laughs> oh. He was enjoying my story. Well, what's ironic is like we're listening to you and then like you stopped and you kind of froze. And then I'm looking at, at the the platform and I'm like, Damon's not moving, I'm moving, Jeff's not moving. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's me. And then <laughs> like and then I thought I saw Damon start to move and then you were moving. So I was like, okay, I guess it's a blip. Yeah, I, I do have to say uh, drop a few frames there. Uh, blame it on the fact that I no longer have Google Fiber. But you are working on that. Uh, I have done the best I can. <laughs> Is that does your new place not have any fiber options at all? No. No. Oh. But with the community fee, which is part of my 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 rent, I get free internet access, and for ten bucks, I can upgrade it to gig. But it's also cable because it's spectrum. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, I got my internet set up really quickly. So I'm happy. I'm happy to have the internet. Not that yeah. it's spectrum. I'm happy that I got internet set up quickly. Yeah. 
but was and that was, huh. was upgraded for only 10 extra bucks yeah fair hmm, that's unfortunate okay so i came into this apartment with practically nothing uh, most of my stuff was actually uh shipped to one of my coworkers uh, because mm -hmm. they were coming before me uh, mm -hmm. he, he got a house up north um so he could easily stow th have everything stowed in the garage. Uh, so it took me a couple trips to bring stuff in. Um, just this past Friday before work, uh, when uh, one of our managers had finally uh, got in from Austin and moved up and, and her truck got here, she offered to use her truck to help haul some of the bigger items, which were pretty much just my bookshelves. Um, and we packed up the rest of the stuff that was that was there. And so, if anything, all my stuff is here. Not organized. But I didn't have a computer desk because I got rid of my old one uh, in Austin. Uh, I didn't have a couch. Also, got rid of it in Austin. Um, I don't have a bed. Got rid of that in Austin. With the miraculous posted on Facebook and it's gone by the end of the day. Um, I didn't have a dresser. I got rid of that in Austin. So this is kind of a rebuilding phase. I still had a few things. I had uh, a uh, had my computer chair, uh, which is getting ratty. So I got a new one. I'm not sure if you noticed. It was not the same. I did. Um, yeah. I have my tray tables. Uh, I have my uh, TV entertainment center. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it for furniture. Oh, I got a couple of lamps, which is actually what's lighting me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I pretty much have no furniture. So the first thing first was getting, putting in my reimbursement. So there are some things that need to be approved before they can be submitted for reimbursement. Um, right. And, uh, that is pretty much the amount for movement of household goods and uh, any lease breakage stuff. But mm. then there's, I get reimbursed for mileage. And all I need is a Google Maps. And, I, and it should be from like starting location, which would be my apartment in Austin to my location here, so to my apartment in Cincinnati, came to about 1,100 miles plus or something, and they would pay me 67 cents per mile. Mm -hmm. That's the government standard rate, mm -hmm. the IRS like yep. mileage rate, which yep. is good. And so that gave me about 700 and some dollars. Nice. Uh, so that I could submit right away. Didn't need prior approval. I just need to submit. Uh, my hotel stay, I could get reimbursed. So I was able to submit that. That was uh, 440 some dollars. And then on top of that, they have called the settlement allowance, which is 200 bucks. That's it. Nothing. That I could just claim it. I didn't need a receipt. Hmm. I didn't need nothing. It just clicked. Well, because I, I mean, the only thing I needed was an approved relocation request, which I had already gotten. Yeah. So I was able to I mean, get all that, and that's about fourteen hundred dollars right there. So with that, thank what you can get. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, I got myself a new computer desk instead of being just this little triangular ish quarter desk i'm like well when i got that it was the time of single monitors where in general one only uses one monitor well i have three i added one more to my my desktop so i've got my two desktop monitors and then i uh during the pandemic when we were working from home um, I kind of got used to having an external monitor for my, for a laptop for work. 
And I decided, well, hell, I like this setup. I'm going to use that for my own personal MacBook, which I ended up getting in the pandemic because I saved a shit ton of little money and got myself a MacBook, which is how I edit this podcast. So now with this, I've got a monitor here, here, and here. I got my laptop I put on one of my uh, uh, tray tables that I have over here. And that kind of... Um, because of how big my desk is. I was hoping it would be a little bit bigger than it actually is, but it's fine. It's acceptable. The one thing I don't like about it is I think it's two inches too tall. Mm. The my desk? Chair right now, yeah, my chair right now is up to full height. And I'm like... So... Oh. Uh, I still, it's, it's usable. I, it's just, it would be better if, I don't know, maybe there's a way to, to get something to like hang down so my, uh, my, my keyboard and mouse I can have like right below the desk. Cause my last one, I had a, like a little slidey thing that I could, mm-hmm. my yeah. Keyboard and mouse yeah. Right yeah. Down. Those, you can pick those up relatively decent for aftermarket. Yeah. So might have to look into that to make something that's a little more comfortable. Uh, I was a little disappointed because I was hoping I would be able to put my my gaming Mac mat on here, but it's too big. <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, I like it still. It's pretty. It's black. It's also got. Uh... Let me turn them. Turn them on. Mm-hmm. Come on, there we go. I got some, you can't see it here. Okay, it also has I can some see, light. We can kind of see. Can you see, can you see yeah. a little glow? Oh, well, you guys probably. Yeah, I can see it a little bit. Let me, let me, let me move the camera for the audience. Use my other ah. Uh, there we go. So we got some, some little lights here under. So if I, I game and decide to turn off my lights and decide to go dark, uh, there still can be a little light. I set it to green because I kind of wanted to see my my living room in a green theme because I wanted like a red and mm. black for my my kitchen. My bathroom would be themed blue, and my bedroom would be black because I kind of want a darkened bedroom. And then then here I'm like, what color? Well, what when a green life living that sort of thing. Yes, I'm gay. I have to be have a theme. Mm. So it's it's been so I had to put that together last weekend. I did that and oh god, was I exhausted. Also that same day I ordered a futon from IKEA. Which was delivered the same day my desk was delivered. In addition, my mother, the kind soul that she was, had offered me when she was last in Austin to visit me. She said, said, you know, it's like every year we did this thing. We thought, why don't, why don't we get you a new piece of furniture? And I'm like, hey, mom, can I take you up on that offer? <laughs> and she, lo- she was looking at my uh, uh, wish list where I kind of like saved which of these items, like the desk, uh, was something from Amazon. Um, the futon wasn't because uh, I ended up getting that from IKEA. It was only like 250 bucks. It was great. Um, and uh, I put a, a specific dresser up there, and so she bought me that. I still haven't put that together. <laughs> So the next big thing, so that's the furniture I got. So I did get some furniture. I also got some sundries. I got uh, a new trash can from the bathroom and for, for the, well, it's really for everyday use because I don't really have a good place to put a trash can. Although I think one of the uh, cabinets was meant to be like one of those like, yeah, pull the, out the thin yeah. things that yeah. you can just put the, the thing on. Instead, I just... I decided to like go go with them again theme uh, a round trash can, and I have it like just outside the kitchen. So 
because there's times when I'm out here that I need to put something in the trash and just having it right there is helpful. So, um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, I got the chair also the same day that I got this, the desk also the same day that I got the futon also the same day that, that the, uh, dresser was delivered. So I got a whole bunch of things all at once. The only thing left is the most expensive, the bed. So I decided to go full on. So I had a king size bed. It basically took up the entire room in the last place I was. So I decided, hey, I'm going to give myself more space in my bedroom and shrink it down. And I decided to go all the way to full. So step above twin, step below queen. Um, and I think it'll be just fine. Uh, in the meantime, I got the futon. And for I didn't have that for my first week here in the apartment. So I was sleeping on the floor of my bedroom for a week. Oh, the same day I also got oh. new bed sheets for my my full full bed that I don't have yet. So now I just need to get get an actual bed bed. And that uh, the one I want uh, is roughly eleven hundred dollars or something like that. But uh, I did get my uh, $1,600 for um, movement of goods approved. So I just need that reimbursement to come through. And with that, I can get myself a bed. Cool. In addition, I'm not done yet. I know I'm taking up like a whole bunch of time, but a lot of things happened for me. Uh, so I decided while I'm here and can be kind of bored, uh, even though I can now play my video games and I got my computer all set up, um, I decided to get on a couple of apps and I'm hoping to find some Nikki. <laughs> all right. I've been honestly, I've been wondering when that was going to happen. And I don't mean when it's going to happen. I just meant when you were going to bring that up. And it's funny. I'm going to. OK, so you're in Springdale, mm -hmm. correct? Which side of the city. OK, so. Uh, good luck for someone close. I'm just gonna put it out there, because um, you'll you'll have to, unless you're okay with certain things, you're gonna have to go through a few layers of of things. There's there's a there's a lot of DL slash married guys in like North Cincy, um, a lot. <laughs> um, uh, well, technically all over, but year old. I mean. He was like, if he's not is, married, is, is there a, rob, a problem? A problem with me being twenty six, realizing how old I am, and I'm like, oh hell no! It's just more reason for you to call me daddy. Lord. I was just gonna say, like, if if you don't care about that, I mean, you could totally play into that. So I mean, absolutely. Oh, we talked about that, and and oh, remember also. That window? I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. There's a reason why I little my food time in the bedroom. <laughs> Look at you go. Have fun with that. Be that be that be that fresh meat, that new kid on the block. In that, general, yeah. in general, he kind of thinks uh, uh, suggested it. There we go. But for those of you who check, this will be the first time that I played with anybody in years. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm making note of fact, but, you know, I'm breaking <laughs> a pride spell, even though it was, was, was intentionally 
been mm-hmm, traditional mm-hmm. Media made by myself. It, it's all my fault in any case. So, I mean, I, no, I mean, I, I look at it this way. Yeah. I mean, I think that like that our community is hypersexually sexualized. Right. There's a lot of emphasis on like, you know, hooking up with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll talk about that in a little moment. But the the thing is, is that I think like when you like not a lot of people talk about people not being very active. And the reason I say yeah. that is because um, I'll relate it to my thing in a little bit. But like like I was hyper aware of people being on prep and like prep for HIV and the medication and some stuff and like, but there's a thing like if you're not putting yourself into behavioral activities that put you at risk for exposure, you don't have to take prep. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like, um, if you're, this is going to seem like sideways. If you're not like having experiences that could potentially get you pregnant, you don't have to take the pill. Right. But like, And those aren't equivalent, like, in terms of, like, their medical, like, administration and how they work. But my point is, like, if you're not a person who does certain things and you don't have to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I I think that, you know, people kind of feel like, you know, MSM are getting their freak on a lot. And while that can be true, you can also be selective. And in today's day and age, I'm like, you know, like, we, we did not have this when we was young. Like... This didn't exist. If I had this when I was young, I probably would have been even later in terms of getting laid, maybe. Because, <laughs> like, like this would have been everything I needed. Because it's mostly what I need now. Like, I don't, I'm not a person that needs to have time to be with another man. Because this, this digital technology has brought me many, 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 or many. It's just so accessible nowadays. Many orgasms. So. Right. Just saying. <laughs> An average. I don't daily. need a man. I got a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I got a device. <laughs> and sometimes you can hook up more than one device to the other. Anyways. Or, you cast my TV if yeah. I want to. Yeah. But I'm glad I am. I will say, Jeff, I am glad that you are. Um, experiencing new things and experiencing not new things but experiencing a new place as i said and in, 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 when people look at the show notes i titled my section new found adventure which is a reference to final fantasy 14 and the, and also the fact that it is new found i'm in a new place and i literally got rid of a boatload of stuff yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I had to get a new desk, a new dresser, a new, new couch slash futon. I did. Um, a, like, I, I had to get a whole bunch of new things. I still have a few old, yeah. of the old things, but I had to get a whole bunch of new things uh, in the process. So, and I got a new apartment and, and everything's clean. And, and maybe, maybe mm. with this, I would get a little more self confidence in myself, which might lead me to more adventurous opportunities. So it's, it's it, it, right now it's been a rough go, just, you know, trying to budget the money because I like, it took forever to even get that first set of uh, uh, claims approved, mm-hmm. much less get the money. And actually once it was, once it passed, passed the last person uh, to approve it, uh, it took uh, two or three days for me to even get the money into my account. So, yeah. And uh, that's the only thing I was worried about. Bureaucracy just uh, takes so much time uh, mm-hmm. out of it and which makes it aggravating. So I can be short on cash. I'm already short on cash until I can get my reimbursement and then uh, this first reimbursement. And I think with this one, I should be okay. I'm done with all my big purchases. So I can focus on the little things, food and, yeah. and gas. And uh, 
and I and still I would... I'm gonna be here and not going out that often anyway. So, um, I'll, I'll, yeah. And because my rent is essentially like a hundred, at least hundred, two hundred dollars less than than my previous place, almost two hundred dollars. It's a little more than nice, than that. Uh, or a little less than two hundred dollars less. But um, it's still that's gonna save me money, etc. I'm being paid it's the same thing. Um, gas actually might be a little higher here than it was in Boston. And then I have to worry about the Ohio taxes because unlike Texas, Ohio has state taxes. And then the nice thing is I found out my school district doesn't do taxes. Hmm. I, I looked it up and and and, and you can log to my, my state W4, the, the school district that I'm in, because I actually went to the, the, the tax site, did the finder, put in my address, and gave me the school district, and the rate was 0. 0.00. So. But I, I'm like, I'm going to complain about that. Yeah, I'm not going to complain. I'm like, I found a great place. So new find adventure for me. Damon. Woo. Okay. Um after all that. After all that. Um so May was interesting. It's been a busy, busy, busy time. Um, hence why we haven't really done much. Um uh for me. The big things, the big highlights were um, the men's chorus. We had our um, pre-Pride concert. Um, it's called Glitter and Be Gay. Um, it was a great show, and we had really good audiences, and it was a lot of fun um, overall. Um, as the membership VP, it could be a little stressful, but it wasn't as bad as it's been. This is now my third concert in this role, so... Good times, good, good, fun times. So I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the show. Um, always fun. Um, big thing for me was um, was it literally last weekend? Yeah. So last weekend, um, I went to International Mister Letter IML for the first time ever. So while I've been a leather person for years. I have never gone to IML. The main reason being, um, it is a price, it is a cost sink, very much so. Um, and it is a big, 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 massive event. Mm -hmm. um, there were 59 contestants this year for IML 46. Um, there was so much going on um i went by myself uh, which i was good and bad it had the intention of i kind of played i could play make my own schedule i didn't have to worry about someone else um i didn't have to worry about someone staying with me and i was able to spread out in my wonderful big room with two beds uh, <laughs> which was very nice um i literally um the the second bed became where my suitcase sat and was open so I could just like pull things as I needed it, which was kind of cool. Uh, I mostly did the contest and the events surrounding IML. I did not leave the hotel much, um, which I think was a good and bad thing. I would have liked to have gone out, but I was hearing from people and this is just something that you don't know until you're actually there, but a lot of the events that are happening during IML are not connected to IML. They're not put on by IML. They're mm -hmm. put on by other, the bars or, or um, event promoters or what have you. And of course, since it's a big event, an international event, um, prices go up. So while I was very interested in going to certain things, the cost of just getting in and there not being a guarantee that you could e you would even get in um, 
was like, I don't, I don't want to do all that because I also would have to have paid to drive there or get there and back. So I mostly stayed at the hotel. Um, there was decent places nearby. So hotel restaurant, believe it or not, one of the cheapest places to eat. Um, oh, wow. Go figure. Wow. Like, I, I mean, yeah, go figure. It wasn't, no, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like super, super like amazing, spectacular food, but it was good food for what you're paying for. Um, and I went to there a couple of times. I went there for, they had a brunch, um, a buffet on, I want to say Friday that I went to. That was a little pricey for my personal taste, but I ate the shit out of it. Because <laughs> I ate when I was um, um, and overall, uh, the other main thing, which I've mentioned, if you're following me on Facebook, uh, vendor market at um, IML is insane. Um, so many vendors, so many, so much space. There's, it, it's just, it was crazy. And I didn't even see all of it. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because I probably would have spent a lot more than I did. Um, but yeah, and the contest, it was great to see the contest, which was one of the main reasons why I went was to see and experience the contest on this side of it to potentially be on the contestant side of it in the future. Don't know if that'll be a thing. I'm not going to put it out there as a yes or no yet. I'm just saying it was good to see. Um, I will admit it looks like IML has their shit together. They've been doing this for many, many years. There is a cycle to everything. There is a, a, a process that gets in place. I have to believe they have amazing stage management and production crews out there because things were on. Um, you had the contestants coming out on stage and they've got 59 fucking contestants, so they got to go through them. And it, it can get, it can be a lot, especially in those first beginnings, but it was um, interesting to see. Um, the 59 contestants, all of the contestants go through Friday night stuff, oh, Thursday introduction, like getting their numbers. Then they have the Pexman personality on Friday. Friday and Saturday, they do interviews. And then on Sunday, they take the who, however many, this time in case it was 59, and then they, you get a top 20. And then those 20 are the ones that continue on to do their speeches and um, physique showings. And then out of that 20 is where you get your top three, your IML and your first and second runner-ups. And it was, it was a joy to see the contestants, all of them put everything out there. And it was, it was, it was, a, it was a grand experience. Um, I was, I would say a little overwhelmed. I could see, feel that overwhelming coming often just because of the amount of people and the amount of things going on. And on the flip of that, though, they're not being a whole lot going on, which is kind of weird. Um, the event mostly focuses on the contest and kind of singularly focuses on the contest. They do education one of the days they do other events here and there. There were parties going on at the hotel. Um, I did go to any of them. No, I didn't. Yeah. I went to the opening ceremony and that was it. So, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot going on. Um, I, if you, again, if you follow me on Facebook, I spent a lot of money and got some really great stuff. And I now have a formal um, leather outfit, a kilt and shirt, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And some other things, yeah. And um, 
yeah, it, it, it's great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be happy here in uh, a few weeks when I have to pay the credit card bill, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would say overall it was worth it to go. Um, and I know now what to potentially prepare for in the future. Should I go again? Um, I would like to go with someone, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Having someone there would have been nice to, <laughs> lack of a better phrase, reel my ass in when I'm like, I need to buy that and that and that and that and that. So, yeah, good fun times. Gary? Um, so this month was a lot of travel. A lot of travel. Yeah. So much travel. I traveled three times this month. And by travel, I mean like I left my hometown, had to go somewhere for a couple days and come back. So, yeah, there's that. Um, and it was all related to work part of work um you know uh so you try to <laughs> figure out what it is that you're doing <laughs> mm -hmm. in that in that time frame and make it all happen um which is ironic because i just got my new car new so to speak um you know two months ago so yeah there's that um so you you try to figure those things out. And it was enjoyable. Sorry, I'm doing something really quick while I'm talking to you about this because I just realized I don't know what this is. But if I do this. Because <laughs> um, I'm old and math is hard. Um, so let's do this and that. Okay. So add that and that and that. Yeah, I drove over 2,000 miles this month. Wow. Over three trips. So I was gone at the very beginning of the month, I was gone in the middle of the month, and I was gone last week. <laughs> so wow. I drove a lot. A lot. Um, which if we divide by... Yeah, I... So the amount of time I spent driving on the road is practically equivalent to one full week of work. And that's just the driving. Wow. So when I say I drove a lot this month, I'm, I'm being legit. Like, yeah. So there's that. Uh, so the very first, very beginning of the month was fine. It was for the statewide coalition. I enjoy being active and a part of that. Um, it was good engagement as usual. Uh, it was part of the, what we call the on the road show where we meet with individuals living in our state that are living with HIV and get direct feedback from them on their care and services, how they're doing in that region, um, things that they have as suggestions for feedback. Halfway through the month, um, I got to go to the AFL-CIO 46th Constitutional Convention for the state of Pennsylvania. The AFL-CIO is like an umbrella union organization that represents many like different unions underneath it. Um, and so each state has its own chapter. So I went to that. Um, I got to see Governor Josh Shapiro speak live. Uh, he's the governor for our state. I also got to see several other high-profile um, individuals in politics and that kind of stuff. It was very educational and interesting. So that was an experience. And then last week, I was in Arlington, Virginia, a.k.a. Washington, D.C., for a national work conference, um, Synchronicity 2024, which focuses on HIV, um, Hep C, LGBTQ health primarily as those things. Um, and I got to see uh, Admiral... Um, Dr. Rachel Levine, uh, who is the Secretary of Health for the nation, speak live in a ballroom with us, which is very exciting. She used to be our director, our Secretary of Health for Pennsylvania. For those that don't know, um, Dr. Levine is trans and is like the, is the highest level person that has ascended in that um, direction. So it was great to see them speak uh, along with several other people. So it was a lot um, and highly enjoyable. And then on top of that, I got to see AJ last week. Nice. Um, aka Pupzio. So, because they live relatively nearby, um, DC traffic being what it is. Uh, 
because <laughs> they like by as the crow flies, they live a little bit nearby, which isn't too bad. But, you know, then you got to deal with the traffic to get around. So we got together a couple times and had dinner, which was very nice. Um, so uh, having done all that travel and because I'm a voyeur and I'm interested and I'm nosy about things like I'm on the apps and I'm checking out the lay of the land and seeing like, you know, who's out and what the profiles say and what's going on. So that's why I made the reference earlier mm-hmm. to folks and like being on prep and stuff. Um and because the last conference I was just at, there was a huge amount of focus on prep for HIV, like how it's been around for quite a while now. Um, and there's been a lot of inroads. We've just begun to possibly see it's not a trend yet, but we have started to see a reduction in HIV cases here in the U.S., which is exciting. Right. Um, however, people of color significantly are demographics that are not involved in prep for HIV. And part of the reason for the conference last week was we talk about syndemics, which is like overlaps and crossover, like joining areas of care and social determinants of health. So there was a lot of discussion about like, you know, how racism, homophobia, transphobia, like poor medical care, lack of trust in the medical systems, like a lot of those things can be compounding issues for folks. Um, in the efforts of prevention, let alone getting tested and and treatment and all that kind of stuff. So, but there was a lot of folks that were out there um, in the streets, uh, like doing things or wanting to hook up. And let me tell you what, uh, sometimes when when you're new to an area, and Jeff might be experiencing this or having this experience soon, when you are the fresh meat or the new, like, thing in town, you kind of become popular or a focus. So there is something to be said for your personal ego and your self-confidence when you find that lots of people are interested in you um, because they don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see you every day or every week if you're on the right. apps that often. Or, yeah, so right. I get that. Um, sort of the opposite in a way is um, being at... IML where everyone's there. So I didn't talk about this earlier. Yes, there is a very sexual aspect to um, the IML event. There's a very sexual aspect to everything. And given that for the most part, Mm -hmm. I think we had the whole hotel, there was a lot of shenanigans going on. Like activities, like a lot activities um, happening, hooking, hooking up, happening in stairwells. Um, oh, out um, room doors that are just open. Yeah, that kind of thing. Those are what I'm talking about. Like it was interesting. <laughs> it reminded it, it. It just took. For, for those, it reminded me in a sense of a bathhouse, but it wasn't to that extreme where like all the rooms are open kind of thing. It was just, there's a there was a lot if you were on the apps if you, okay, if you were on the apps at IML in Chicago if you wanted something you could have gotten it. Like Anything. And considering it's a fetish, uh, a lot of kinky folks out there, Mm -hmm. everything, anything, everything. Yep, 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 yep. Well, let me just say this. Um, (laughs) Conferences and conventions, like, who just talked to me about this? Someone just said to me their theory that conferences and conventions are nothing but orgies oh i know this will get to the rest of my part of my thing because it's someone who's been on the show um said to me their theory is is that like conferences and conventions are nothing but profession what is it professionally masqueraded sex parties (laughs) like and i found it really (laughs) interesting because their point wasn't that far off they're like really so the national realtors convention there's no sex happening there. The national, like, you know, dental hygienist conference, 
there's no sex happening there. Like, I mean, like, like their, their point was well taken. Like, if you think there isn't some people getting their, getting, you know, their groove on, um, or as I as I learned at this conference this past week, oh damn, I don't have my notes with me. <laughs> it's in my other, it's in my work notebook. Um, people just be living, like, or as the youth now say, uh, life be life be lifened. Um, and the thing <laughs> is, they're just hooking up. You know, they're they're doing their thing, and I found that very interesting when I was at a con. Over Memorial Weekend, this person who's been a guest on our podcast had said to me, you know, about, no, they're like, any any reason for a, a group of individuals to get together at a hotel, there'd be, there'd be, some, there'd be some of that going on. Definitely which, yeah, which I thought was a, a fair assessment, a, a thing to say. So, yeah, I traveled a lot. Oh, my God, I didn't even include that in my math. Okay, so I drove more than 2,000 miles. I drove close to probably 2,500 miles. I forgot about the personal trip that I took, which is unrelated to work. And that is related to my second part, which is the question that some people have asked. Am I a furry? <laughs> Wait. We're going to need some. No, we're going to need more context. We're going to need some, some clarification. Well, the context is I went to Anthro, Ohio. Ah. So, for those that don't know, Anthro, Ohio is a furry con convention that takes place in Ohio. Um, and it was in Columbus, Ohio this year. I think it's been in Columbus um, for a number of years. But. Uh, I decided to go because I know someone who's heavily involved. Y'all know them too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I decided I wanted to surprise them and be supportive. Oh, so those of you that recall, we had a co-host Chester, AKA shutter who was on the podcast and um, since he, you know, uh, has been doing his thing, he has become uh, very much involved in the furry scene in Ohio. Um, and I had a very interesting conversation. Um, shout out to to Dozer and Burlick because they were at the, hey. at the con and I got to see them. And uh, it was actually Dozer that was the one who made the hypothesis, the theory that, you know, these <laughs> professional con can, conferences or conventions are nothing more than like sex parties. But um and God bless. I love Burlick because we spent yet again a couple of hours sitting in a hotel having an in-depth conversation <laughs> about life and its meaning and everything in between. And in the midst of that was, you know, this crossover between the furry community and um, the bear community, the pup community, the leather kink community. Um, and like a lot. I mean, we discussed a bunch of that stuff. So what happened right. was. I knew that Shutter was going to be there. He's a photographer. He works in, I think the, I think they call it the publicity department. Um, and he has become much more active. He's been doing um, fur walks in Columbus. He's been organizing activities, some charity focuses, having dances. Like he's really thriving in that arena. And, you know, as part of, part of Chosen Family, I knew that like this was a big deal that the con was coming up. And I knew something specific was going to happen towards the end of the con. So I decided to go. Um, I didn't tell anybody ahead of time. I was like, okay, not a big deal. I've traveled a lot for work. I got extra points for the hotel thing. I am not going to try to stay at the host hotel because I knew it was sold out. Um, so I got a free <laughs> night at a local hotel, drove down, and had timed it that I wanted to get there before registration closed on the final day because for Anthro Ohio, for their con, they do day passes plus like a whole weekend thing. So I was like, okay, I'm going to like pay the day pass, yada, yada. I unfortunately didn't pay close enough attention to the schedule. I didn't realize until I was on the road, I was going to get there an hour after registration closed. Oh, so I was like, this could pose a challenge because the thing I wanted to go to was the closing ceremony. And in order to get in, I would need a badge, which means I have to be registered. But if registration's closed, then I might not have a badge. And this could mm. be like get all kinds of weird and awkward. And because I was trying to surprise Shutter was showing up, I didn't tell them or anybody. So I'm like, I but I got my registration. I got my email. It says if you need anything, you know, send an email to this email address, which I did. 
I didn't hear back, which is sort of not a surprise because it's the end of the con, like they're busy. So I show up, park at the hotel, get a parking spot, come walking around. I go walking past part of the lobby to get to the double doors. And I see a bunch of fur folk, like, you know, in the, the lobby area. And I was like, this is the place. Um, and, and and I've been around the furry community before a little bit. Um, I've always been like a friend, <laughs> you know, kind of adjacent <laughs> thing. So I come walking into the hotel lobby and there are, you know, furry folk, you know, around and, and all sorts of different, you know, representations of their personas. Um, and so I go to the left to walk around the lobby because I remember seeing it said, you have to go to this room for registration. And I don't know this hotel. I don't know the layout. So I'm like, OK, so I hang left sort of towards the front desk and I go to walk. I get halfway across the lobby and I look to my right and there's Shutter. Sitting <laughs> at like the hotel bar kind of thing that's right in the, off the lobby, facing the lobby. And they're just sitting there and they lock eyes on me. And they're like, and they just kind of cock the head and throw their hands up like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I just laugh and I come walking over and they, you know, get up to meet me and they give me a hug and they're like, what in the hell are you doing here? And I was like, surprise. And they were like, <laughs> what? And I was like, I came down, you know, because it's the last day of the con. And I know this is a big deal. And they were like, okay. like, And, and then I realized, like, I absolutely shocked them. And they were kind of stunned. And they, it took them a while to process and figure out that I was really there. And, like, what was happening, like, in that, you know. And so, long story short. We try to get me registered. It's it's a long process. They were already packing up. Shutter and I get a chance to like hang out in their hotel room for a little bit and just talk and chat. Um, I let them know as we were there. I was like, I already have a hotel room. Please don't worry about like you know my accommodation stuff. Yada yada. Um, and then I told them, I said, I'm here to be supportive because I know like this is a big deal for you. Um, that you have been working really hard, you know, with this event and with this community and. Um, I couldn't wipe the smile off my face, honestly, like for the first hour or two, because if you've ever been around the community a little bit, it's people living their most authentic self in a way. And mm -hmm. so they're just, they're just being them and their expression is so varied from like, you know, full fur suits to just pieces to like, um, modifying their their presence you know in various ways and so i just i just was really appreciative like and honored to like be around folks who were just like doing their thing and and very polite you know and that's one of the things i've kind of noticed that the furry community is very welcoming um and actually that's something burlick and i had a long conversation about like that there's really a lack of judgment um unlike the msm community or the bear community, mm. or the leather community, or the pup community. Um, and I'm not shading all of them. It's just there's some... <laughs> <laughs> I see your fact fan there, David. But the thing is, like, those groups are a little bit more insular. And so they're not as welcoming if they don't know you. Um, so uh, right. here is the whole reason why I went down um, to be supportive. Uh, it was announced at the closing ceremony. And so people kind of knew this. Um I thought it was going to be a bigger announcement than it, than it was, but also my imagination ran away from me. Uh, <laughs> Shutter is officially now the head of the con. Oh, right. And some, some, and some background to understand the importance of this. Uh, the previous head of the con for Anthrohio has been doing it for 10 years. When they started, they had roughly over 300 attendees. Last year, they had over 1,200 attendees. Oh, jeez. Oh. This year, they had over 1,950. Holy shit. Wow. So, this year, the host hotel sold out in a month. Mm. And they had never had that happen before. They had their hotel sell out about a month to a couple weeks before the before the con so they the board and the con staff were not really prepared for the explosion of of the attendance this year um and so you know i think his name's tim was the head of the con before he is stepping down and this was planned by the board it was known um and shutter has been given like the 
offered opportunity to be the head of the con. And he's had some great guidance from Jeru and some other folks that I uh, kind of know by name and or have met. And so to me, it was really big deal to know and have been friends for so long to see somebody like take such a different position. Um, because having been a person who's put on a, a run, my <laughs> my little bear run has never been to that size. Um yeah. And it had so many moving pieces. And I will say this, this event was so highly organized, like so impressively so. Like they talked about some statistics and stuff. They have 25 departments, as in staffing groups. I saw that reaction, David, like that run the con, like from the food vendor to the the, to the marketing type stuff, to the to the plenary type educational session things, to the multiple DJs for the multiple dances that took place over the weekend. And like the fursuit stuff and the walk and like the car show. I mean, it's just food trucks. I mean, like the amount of organizing that goes into this thing is like sort of astounding. Like I understand it because I put on events, but like even I was like, God damn like that's yeah. so much stuff so anyways it was really really great to go um i saw tofu uh and I, tofu was the one who asked so anyways they raised money for charity every year they had a they had an auction it was very entertaining because it's a live auction so people donate a bunch of stuff and they have two actually three mcs that like talk about it like a real auction and so they bid and it's live and like you can go in increments and blah 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 anyways it was all for a previous charity they'd done that they returned to um which is sort of i don't know the name of it off the top of my head it's like an animal type sanctuary which makes mm. sense mm -hmm. and the woman who was there that was a part of the staff that was involved um came up and spoke afterwards and thanked everybody for you know the charity and the donations and all the you know information and being involved and one of the funniest things is one of the mcs from the charity said to her uh so I have one very important question for you. In fact, it's the most important question that could ever happen. Now that you've been to Anthro Ohio and you've been to a fur con, what is your fursona? Which is kind of this thing that like the running joke is like, you just don't go to a furry event and not be a furry when you leave. <laughs> so the tables got turned on me when I was talking with some other folks um, later that night. And they were like, and so Tofu was the one who was like, so, like, do you consider yourself a furry? And I was like, well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, technically, I registered for the con, which, you know, some people didn't know. And they were like, well, then, you know, I guess that means you're a part of the community. And then they wanted to know what my fursona was. And I was like, uh, 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 like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I've not thought about that or whatever. Um, just, just, just go with bear. Just. Go the easy route. Right, right. But that was the running joke is you don't have to do that. Like you can you could pick something completely different. You can invent something. Like you can make a hybrid of something. Um, right. Like like that's the part of the thing about the community is that it's so creative and imaginative um, that you can literally kind of do or be anything. Uh, so I got a taste, a very small taste of like what the furry community is like and was enjoyable to go to the con for about a half a day basically um and to be around folks and to meet them and, and that kind of stuff so yeah uh so that was the question am i a furry um and what i feel like is it's kind of like what we talk about with our podcast and the bear community is it's the label you choose yeah like are you a bear well do you think you're a bear do you want to be a bear like or a cub or whatever like that's kind of like your decision so um, I don't see myself necessarily as like being a fursuiter, like, and you know, creating an identity with a mascot and dressing and all that kind of stuff. But right. who knows? Anything's possible. Um, so yeah, like it was a very fun experience to go and to see folks in, um, in that environment and, to be there uh, to kind of see like the changing of the guard, so to speak, and um, for Shutter to now become the head of the con, um, mm. to which I messaged them the very next morning because um, it was funny. I, they were like, well, you know, when do you leave town? And I was like, well, actually, I got to leave at like 8 or 8.30 because I have to get back home here for a meeting in the afternoon on the holiday because it was Memorial Weekend. Um, and I've got some other stuff planned. And then I got to leave town the very next day for work to go to this conference in D.C., so it was kind of a tight window thing. And they were like, oh, okay. And I'm, we made plans. I'm going to see them soon. 
But uh, it was really comical because <laughs> the next morning I texted them as I was leaving Columbus and I was like, welcome to your first day, Mr. Head of the Con. <laughs> because I knew, like, I know how it works. Like, like you don't really get a breath. Like, as soon as this event's mm-hmm. over, like, you're already working and planning on the next one. And given that they had such un- unprecedented, like, turnout and support and all these things that happen. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. So, but I'm very excited for them. It was a good experience. It was a very busy month of May. Oh, and I forgot in the midst of all of that, uh, we had our HIV AIDS awareness walk. That also happened yeah. in the midst of the month. So, uh, June, now that it's here is going to be a little busy. Um, just as a forecast, I have a speaking engagement. Um, we're doing a dinner symposium with HIV providers locally here in town. I've been asked to be a part of that. Um, so I have a small portion that I'm going to be speaking. That's coming up this month. Uh, I will be going back to Columbus for Columbus Pride, which is one of the largest prides in the Northeast region. Um, and then also I'm going to be traveling uh, for a one-day conference down south of here, uh, probably with some coworkers. And then we have our own Pride Festival happening at the end of the month. Mm. And then we get to July. And I think July is when I can kind of start to breathe. Um, so, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> so, it's going to be busy. But I, I knew May was going to be pretty hectic. But, yeah. So, there's that. But I just, it was it was a good experience. And I wanted to give uh, Shudder the love and the, and the recognition of the shout out that they've ascended um, to this highly important role um to be in charge of the things now to be fair i'm super impressed that the con like i i think they said they had like a hundred staff um which is a lot of people to manage and organize but this event has been going on for i want to say close to 20 years so it's got some significant legacy behind it in Mm -hmm. terms of like people and like the activities. And, and so there's a part of me that's like, there is a, I don't want to give it significance. There's a small aspect of like the rinse and repeat. Like you have a a skeletal template of these are the things that we do on these days and times. And this is kind of how this works. Um, So I'm, I'm very hopeful and excited for them. And who knows, maybe I'll go to the whole con next year. Um, We shall, we shall see what that is. Anyways. So my, that is amazing. Art. Aww. That makes sense that actually, I could not remember Toad where you live, but it makes sense that, so this is the thing about the furry community. I kind of get the impression <laughs> that a lot of the furry community is aware of each other. I'm not going to say they all know each other, but they are aware of each other um, in some aspects. And like, so one of the biggest furry cons is actually coming up july 4th weekend and that's in pittsburgh to the south of me and i know Mm. some folks that have gone to that um so i am not necessarily planning on going to that but who knows maybe that's my well i was just gonna say maybe that's my (laughs) new thing maybe i just pop up (laughs) unannounced that's my idea (laughs) surprise furry I will say, like, there was some impressive um, fursuit, fursona kind of things. Um, it's interesting because some people were really impressed with certain things and they were talking to me and they're like, oh, my God, like, blah, 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 there's this thing. And I was trying really hard not to be that con- unintentionally condescending jerk. Um, Adam Savage just gave this great YouTube talk about like about being condescending when you don't mean to be. And he was talking about how like if you're on the spectrum a little bit like that, you don't realize when you're talking to someone that you might like be a little emotionally disconnected. And to you, Mm. so you're talking to them very factually and you don't realize that maybe what you're saying is sort of a little offensive when you don't mean it to be. Um, and I found that interesting because they were talking to me about like this technology of like a fursuit or something or whatever. And I was like, right. And I was like, well, that's kind of like this and this that can be done in drag. And I wasn't trying to equate them. I was just saying like, yes, like there's a ton of, of possibility out there in the creativity of things. Um, you know, Damon, we just saw a couple weeks ago, like a drag queen that used LED lighting as a part of their outfit on the right. runway. And that's the, the sort of the equivalent they were making. And I was like, yeah, I was like, and, uh, and so looking back on it, I'm like, oh yeah, like I, I need to be a little bit more temperate about that to not seem like I'm being dismissive 
of someone right. else's like trying to help me understand something. Cause to me, I like, it was very like, yeah, I already know that, but they don't know <laughs> me and they don't know what I know. And this is not my landscape, so to speak. Right. So there's that, but yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It was fun. So, you know, and, uh, I think that's it for me for the, the month of May. Well, all I got to say is, go on, girl, Miss Janet. <laughs> Damon, what's been going on in YouTube? Oh, Lord. I'm not even on this uh, show anymore. Hold on. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Going down. Uh, oh, we have a new subscriber. Uh, Jimbo McKellar. Welcome. Jimbo McKellar. Maddie, I think that's all the people I've got. Daddy, I guess. Yeah. And Gary, <laughs> uh, why don't we talk about our patrons? <laughs> so we want to thank uh, our patrons from this past month. We want to give big bear cub hug store patrons, Charles W., Michael K. at the Cubster level, and then our Ooh Bears, David T., Lee, and Michael Q. And then our buddies, Lloyd G. and Michael V. Yay. Yay. Oh, I should probably flash up that patron card, too. Yay. There they are. All right, some of our favorite people in all the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary? Um <laughs> Something feels weird, but also oddly uh, reasonable, considering everything we just covered. Uh, <laughs> right. Out of how many weeks were in, Sundays were in June? Four? June. Have, I think you mean May. May. We have four or five. <laughs> uh, there were just four. Okay. So we, mm-hmm. we were halfway there. Um, we, we really appreciate the support of our, all of our patrons. Con- considering we had a couple of off weeks, right? So, yeah, I mean, let's talk about it. Like, so the recent shows <laughs> for this for the podcast were um, we had COL episode 739, the what's going on for the month of April of 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we took a hiatus and the plan was, Jeff, you were moving across town for those that don't know about some of the magic oh, behind no, no. the scenes. Across the country. Town. Sorry, sorry. It's a, it, <laughs> it's a cross town. It's not a big deal. It's only another whole other time zone. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> Jeff was moving. Yeah, he was moving from Texas to Ohio, uh, from a red state to a purple state, uh, as you will. So the, the thing is, um, we kind of knew about that. So if you went back to seven, is it seven thirty-eight? Let me double check. Uh, yeah, to seven thirty-eight, the Western Exposure interview. Our interview with Wes from uh, Western and Eastern Exposure was actually uh, live, but we had pre-recorded the April. What's going on before we even talked to Wes? Timey wimey, and then we intended to be gone for one week possibly two if we needed it um and as it turned out it ended up being pretty much the whole month of may um because david and i were going to be away for part of memorial weekend jeff was still getting acclimated and set so we did a flashback episode last week to 556 which was not that long ago it was just four years ago it was may of 2020 yes that's right it was in the midst of the pandemic um and i actually listened to that in the car while i was driving (laughs) because <laughs> I thought it was funny to be like, how crazy did we sound when we were in the midst of that? Um, as a quick recap, uh, Jeff and Damon weren't working and I was. Uh, <laughs> so were you? Yeah, I never had a had time off. I was just oh, I thought you were home. Oh, uh, well, that's fair. You didn't really talk about it in the episode. So I know Damon had been furloughed and I was busy working on COVID. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like I was the only one working during that time because it was a public health emergency. I mean, but... to be fair, I really cheated a lot during that time because um, 
my regular computer was just over there and I had a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I could have my laptop and be working. Well, right. Well, also, <laughs> yeah, well, I can understand that. So that is all to say we were gone for pretty much the month of May. And other than the hiatus between the first generation and the next generation, I don't think there's ever been that kind of a break ever in the podcast history. I feel like um, we had a similar time, but it's been a while. It was just one of those months. It may have been a summer month. I feel like that we just had no time to do the show and we just took a few weeks off, but there were reasons for this one. Right. Um, there definitely was a reason uh, for, uh, oh, I was going to say something, but I totally forgot what it was. Yeah, I mean, so I, I preface that as like we, I mean, we've we've taken a week off here or there. And sometimes when we're doing an away week, we'll do a flashback episode just so folks like, you know, can listen to the archive, so to speak. Um, and there's still something there. But yeah, it's been, I think, really quite some time since we've had such a hiatus and it wasn't technically planned as extensive no. as it was but yeah it was but it was here a now. thing agreed we were really busy cubs <laughs> that's for damn sure yeah and now we get time to relax sit back and you know do work and do a podcast for the most part but you know, Pride Month comes around, and we're, we're all we uh, we've got a title holder, we got a, 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 a health specialist. These this is a big month. This month. Oh, speaking of, before you move on, real fast, uh, Jeff, Damon. While I was at AnthroCon, someone there who we both know said to me, "So have you heard how Damon's doing at IML?" And I said no but i wouldn't know if i was expecting to hear anything and they said oh well with them you know being in the contest and then i just stopped and i was like wait i was like uh i don't think that's happening i was like i'm pretty sure david would have told us if they were running for iml because we knew about them running for the cincinnati title and then i had to catch them up on the whole twinner like thing between you and Trela, like it was really kind mm -hmm. of comical but it was it was so funny for them to be like oh yeah maybe i misunderstood that and i was so amused because i was like <laughs> i was like you little shit like just like i'm just going to iml and like not say anything and then show up at the podcast <laughs> day and be like oh by the way i was one of nearly five dozen contestants and i had an experience <laughs> yeah so to clarify for everyone on the show, um, I intentionally went with not wanting to compete. As someone who had never been before, um, I did not feel ready or comfortable to run in the contest. No, no, no. Um, I barely had formals, so I'm just going to put it out there um, before going there. That's not now I do. excuse anymore. Uh, but it's just, it was just something that I knew having never experienced it before, I was not ready for to just like jump whole heck. And don't get me wrong, people do that. People like title holders have done that. And several, I think this time did. Not me. Mm -mm. Ah, no. Mm -mm. That That's being fair. said. That's totally fair. Anyway, uh, I think it's time that we rock on over. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I'm going to start off with something that's not porn. Um, this is more of, uh, I was watching one of my uh, favorite streams of Grinding Gear, and uh, apparently somebody made an animation of a segment of their show. Uh, of one of their streams where they were doing uh, this quest in 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 Final Fantasy XIV, which deals with these things called a hecti, which is just like 
or at least a piece of the heck die, which is just like this little blob with the with the with an eye. Uh, normally, it's actually a big blob with multiple eyes. In fact, I think it's twelve. What's heck? Can't remember. However many eyes that, that would happen, it's just this big blob. But apparently, all those pieces got separated, and you no, know, you're trying to uh, put them together, and and so. Uh, there was this conversation that was had during that uh, stream, uh, which was uh, really kind of silly, and then somebody animated it, mm. and it's hilarious. In in a, it probably is more funny if you were there when it originally happened and knew more about the uh, circumstance of the conversation, but in general. Uh, I, I, I couldn't. It, I, I was I was laughing my ass off when, when it came up, and I couldn't help myself, but I wanted to share it for those of you who might get the joke because they were kind of making fun of me. <laughs> oh, like that. You're listening God. to it. <laughs> it's so stupid. I know, right? <laughs> This is really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, like you're gonna put so it's like you're gonna put something in my drink. <laughs> oh okay, well, okay. that's not what heck ties into. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so weird. I'm gonna put a napkin on <laughs> on top of my drink. I'm gonna put a couple of napkins. <laughs> okay. It's, it's yeah, just okay. stupid fun about a silly thing that happened in a question in a memo. So, yes, it's not sexy, but um, it's hilarious. So I, I think I think that's, that's good. Fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be sexuated, but that said. That being said. On Damon, a completely different note, Damon? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, my pick is from... Um, Cy the Wolverine or Cyrus N on the um, X's um, and it's the Bears are in heat um, I am assuming this is a collab video for their OnlyFans there are several people listed here uh, but it is basically an orgy hmm? the young dad yeah this is, this keep is... Damon, Jeff recognized one of the people in the video. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But um, I was like, <laughs> young dad, what? Huh? Um, I'm also distracted, so Not don't be wrong, because it's running Not on repeat. Distracted. Ah, yeah, totally that. But yeah, it's a fun, um, it's several bears, uh, bears, in co bears of color, and they're um, fucking just keep it simple like they're 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 having a grand old time and it looks like a lot of fun and um it yeah i'm i'm loving every bit of it it just looks like this would be a great um great party to be a part of this damn might be a good reason to you join uh side the side the Wolverine's uh, OnlyFans to get the full video. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I actually um, I didn't meet him. I saw him at IML. One of them, uh, probably a few more, probably might have been there too. But I know one of them at least was. So um, speaking yeah. of which, follow. Is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh? His feed isn't as porny as I thought it would be, but you mean Psy? Yeah. Or someone else. Psy. Yeah. There's some fun looking folks up in this thing. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just good 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 fun times. Gary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Damon. Um it so caught me off guard. Mine, mine should not surprise people. It says chubby slash plus size thread round two. Um, it's from at blue cow AD, uh, also known as old blue balls. 
It says, look alive, folks. Chubby plus size thread round two. Thick ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, and this is a furry with only his head mm. on. Nice. Um, yeah. And so he's a thick guy with a lot of like ink uh, on his arms. Not necessarily sleeves, but he's got a lot of tats. Um, yeah. And he's just showing off. Uh, and it's kind of funny because I did end up making a comment to Dozer and Burlick when I was at the con. I was like talking about how much furry content is on my social media feeds because I'm following both of them. And so stuff gets like, you know, shared from them. So I see a bunch of things. Um, oh, that's a name. Uh, quick, quick question uh, for, for my information. Uh, can somebody dis- define gray sexual? Hmm. I am unfamiliar oh. with this term. So it's a sexual orientation that falls under asexual spectrum. Um, usually people who identify as gray sexual also can be called gray A, gray ace um, in, in that whole area. So a, a person who is gray sexual may um, infrequently experience sexual attraction at a low intensity. Um, they may feel sexual attraction to some people or under specific circumstances. Um, so being ace or asexual is not about like not having any sexual like interest or experience. It's a spectrum in which, and actually it's someone, there's someone I wanted to have on as a, a interview. I'll still have to reach out to them, um, and see if they are available anyways, um, to talk about asexuality, but I think a lot of people misunderstand asexuality and they think it's the opposite of being a sexual person. And that's not technically okay. true. Asexuality is an individual who just doesn't really have much of a sexual attraction or like libido or interest. Libido is probably not the right way to word to say, but it's they're very much outside of what was promoted, I think, as our community I referenced earlier about people being hypersexual. Right. Or having interest in sex. Um, so I think that the the concept is, is that people see sexuality a lot as like black or white, meaning like either you are sexual or you're not sexual. Mm-hmm. And so gray is the in between. Like they don't really fall into I'm one sorry. or the other. So they're they're not really you know, a person that experiences sexual attraction, but they also aren't repulsed by it or like shun it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, and I also think people sometimes feel like asexuality is like people are celibate, like for a reason or they like are abstinent. Um, they, they might, correlate it and be like oh this person's had sexual trauma or um, Mm -hmm. they've you know had bad experiences with sex like sex can be painful for folks at times um and that's just the experience of, of what they've had and so i think folks who are not asexual have a sometimes are challenged personally to understand what asexuality is kind of like i was just discussing this with someone very recently about the concept of being demisexual it's something i didn't know existed before but i've kind of figured out is probably an appropriate label for me like while i am interested in other people and i would probably have like casual hookups it's not something i really pursue because i realize that i want to have a connection with another person that i'm gonna probably have sex with right now, that isn't to say, because trust, I have hooked up in the past, I have been to adult bookstores, I have sucked dicks through glory holes. Like, I am not, like, saying that that isn't a thing, but I've realized that I don't do that that often, and that when I was doing the majority of that is when I think I was in, like, an addictive behavior, like, mm. moment of my life, a chapter where, like, I was using sex as a way to have connection with other people. And now looking back on it, I'm like, oh, well, that might also be like an indicator that I'm Demi. Like, I want to feel like when I'm with another person that like I kind of know them in some fashion. Um, and it's not just about that seven minutes or whatever. So in some sense, you could say that all sexuality is on a spectrum. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's fair. Yeah. 
because um, even and and you can even move along that spectrum at times. Sometimes right. Sometimes you feel like, and it, sometimes you don't. Yeah. And what I think that. Found? as I'm thinking about it just now, as I was saying it, I think some people might think that Demi and gray are similar, but they're not in my opinion. Like Demi is about having a strong attraction to a person. It's usually an intellectual or an emotional bond, like something that really stimulates you about the other person. And it's not necessarily physical or just physical. Right. So, and that's something I had to figure out is like, yeah, the people I'm more likely to be sexually attracted to have also like kind of sparked something within me. Like, I think that they're, like um, emotionally intuitive, they're intelligent, they are creative, like there's something about them. It's not just the physical um, aspect of that. So yeah, good question. Hmm. Moving on into the links, Damon, what do you got? Um, so I haven't seen all of the episodes, but Bridgerton is back. Um, mm -hmm. If you've been um, following um, this popular Netflix show, um, this is now its third season. Um, essentially, it is taking, um, oh, I was going to say turn of century, but that's not, I think it's Regency era um, London um, and um, adding a very unique layer onto it it follows this family um and the seven you know siblings um and kind of goes through all of their you know going into society and and finding love and romance and all of those things um and it's just been it's been a lot of fun. It's been a, I've been w enjoying it since I started watching it. I think it came out in 2020, if I remember correctly. Um, and for right now, they just have the first four episodes of the season out, and the next four will drop later this month. Um, um, I just I've really I've really been enjoying it. I'm really loving the show. I'm loving what they're doing. This particular season, they're focusing on. Um, the third brother of the Bridgerton family and his friendship with their neighbor's daughter. Um, and there's a lot more going on, everything else. It's just been, it's been very unique. And there's a lot of stories, just a whole other plot thread. There's several plot threads going on. Um, and they're doing it in a, tasteful unique way mm -hmm. yeah so yeah give it a watch let me know your thoughts good deal gary gary uh for those that don't know over on paramount plus star trek discovery had has concluded its final season um which is kind of sad but mm. uh, I suggest you go check it out. If you if you did like enjoy Discovery at all, or maybe you like stepped away from it, I suggest you go back and at least see the, the series through to the end. It's a little bittersweet because they shot all of season five. And the way they shot it, it was a great story arc that took over the whole season. And then they found out after they had wrapped shooting and post principal that they were canceled. So um, they like, didn't like. know that it was going to be their last uh, season. So they went back and did a coda, a pickup and shot like a wrap up to the end of the series, um, which was intriguing. Um, I'm also hmm. very confused by something that happens in the coda because it relates to a short trek which I then went and watched, which everyone kept talking about previously, but I hadn't seen. Now I have more questions. So I feel like I really got to dive down into talking to somebody who understands all of this stuff and be like, please explain the timeline to me on this. But that's a whole other issue. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I, I suggest you go check it out. It's it's one of my favorite um, recent projects that, that they've done, you know, with the Roddenberry franchise with Star Trek, because this was the most... 
um, mixed like process of casting and like moving things forward. We had a woman of color as captain, um, as the protagonist, as the main like character who has a whole journey in a story arc. We had an openly gay relationship um, that was in it and an individual that was trans, an individual that's non-binary. Like, I mean, there, there was just a ton of stuff that they were doing within the show. And I realized it pushed the envelope for a lot of people, but I, I appreciated what they were do- doing. Um, so there's that. If you want to check it out. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to one of our Patreon like uh, patrons. Ooh, ooh. So uh, Q, who we've talked about several times, um, is a lovely individual. Uh, so Michael Q is a licensed massage therapist um, who originally started uh, in, I think, Columbus, um, Ohio. He actually uh, has done massage at several different bear runs. And uh, he is in an article in Bear World magazine nice. that just Booty. came out. Uh, now, the the article reads like it came out a couple months ago, but I just found out about it like this past day. So um, I wanted to give a shout out to recognition to Q. They now they've lived in Ohio. They lived on the West Coast in California. They now live in New York City. Um, and they have a body positive massage therapy service. And that's what this article is about is about like massage for bigger people and why, uh, Q went the route that they do and they promote themselves as a body positive massage practitioner. Um, and, uh, Q's just a really beautiful individual and, um, yeah. I haven't seen them in quite some time. Uh, it's been a number of years, but they are a great individual and I'm very happy that they got the recognition the, of the article and that kind of stuff. So I put that link in there if people are interested in reading it. Uh, one comment is uh, he has a very Lionel Richie smile. <laughs> a Lionel Richie smile. Oh yeah. I see what you mean. Interesting. Um, yeah, so I actually, it was funny because now Q is so close, well, closer than the West Coast. So I was like, even thinking to myself, I'm like, is there any way I can figure out how to get over <laughs> to have a massage done? Because um, Q talks about the fact that there aren't that many massage therapists that are comfortable with bigger people. Um, and he talks about the equipment and like some modifications and stuff and, you know, how people have been treated and um, even like, you know, uh, massage therapists of color um, are in limited uh, amount of, of practice and availability. So, yeah, I, um, I really, really appreciate their endeavors to, um, you know, do something that is much needed because it doesn't matter what your body size is. Everybody needs an ability to relax themselves. Very and true. therapeutic events. So yeah, there's that. Nice. Well, there you have it, folks. <clears throat> after all that, thank you for staying with us. We appreciate that. And especially after this bit of a hiatus. We want to hear from you. We do. Absolutely. You can do that in many ways, such as going to our website, leaving a comment on our blog at comesoutloud.com, shooting us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com, leaving us a voicemail at 361 will talk that's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, aka X, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can even join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning and recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash col and subscribe to our Google Calendar and can get various accoutrements such as a consent is my foreplay shirt in many different styles over on Zazzle and Zazzle.com slash comes out loud as well as various other accoutrements. Uh, some of those designs, such as consent is my foreplay design, was done by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comesoutloud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash comesoutloud. You can follow us on many podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, YouTube Podcasts. In fact, we do have a podcast section of our YouTube page. 
And over on Spotify, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It's Box Step Box, Puppy Box, Cup Box, something or other. Damon. Okay, fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> Not you. Just it. I hit the button like twice and it unmuted, it muted me and then unmuted me and then muted me again. Anyway, um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup 79. That's T H A E. Fuck. T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter or pup umber 79 on Blue Sky. Both those are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, you can go to DMAGamer79 on Twitter or TikTok. Gary? You're muted, Gary. See, I pulled a Damon. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamer73. <laughs> and with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.